Hello everyone. I was browsing Reddit and I came across this <clears throat> terrible article. So I thought I would comment on it for your pleasure. <clears throat> Dirty Energy's Quiet War on Solar Panels. Oh, first of all, I don't like how the title is not capitalized properly, but uh, maybe that's just their format here. In, in any case, I don't like it. Um, so let's see here. Let's say you're thinking about switching to a solar, switching to solar at home, but you're concerned about the startup costs. What if you received generous federal and state tax credits? That could help. I hate this. This smarmy way that leftists in particular write stories like this. It's, it's this talking down to you like you're a moron and this emphasis on what? You're, you're gonna think long term? You think there's other things to consider here? No, like a child. <laughs> You know, teaching teaching a kid his ABCs. It's just as simple as that. A, B, C. Well, what if the government could give you money to do this? Wouldn't that be good? You get money, the government gives you money. How could that be bad? Don't think about it. It's, that could help, exclamation point. Uh, okay, so better still, what if you discovered that during those hot sunny afternoons, when you're at work and hardly using any energy at home, you can sell the excess energy your solar panels generate back to the grid at the full residential rate. This practice, called net metering, helps cut utility bills and shortens the payback period for solar installation costs. That sweetens the deal even more. So, again, a problem. I'll be stopping constantly because there are problems throughout this. What if you can sell the excess energy your solar panels generate back to the grid at the full residential retail rate? What if indeed? Well, that sounds pretty stupid. What if you could buy uh, furniture and then sell it back to a furniture store at the price you bought it? That wouldn't work, because no business survives accepting things for the same price they sell those things. That's how they make a profit. Already, I, I honestly don't know if this is stupidity or dishonesty. I suspect it's uh, stupidity because he was too dishonest to even think about the issue. But that is already you can't run a profitable system like this. And when you contract with a company to install solar panels, you do your part to create jobs. Lots of them. According to Department of Energy data, solar jobs already outnumber correlated jobs by a factor of more than two to one, despite solar making up a much smaller share of the overall grid. Okay. Again, the economic illiteracy is glaring. That is not a good thing. <laughs> if you require more people to produce less energy, that's bad. It's not good. <laughs> All things being equal. <laughs> if you have two factories with the same output, but one employs twice as many people, that's bad. Technology is supposed to be labor saving. It's not good to require more people to do something. Okay. <clears throat> all in all, I'd say these incentives make a strong pitch for solar. You can help address climate change, grow the renewable energy economy, create jobs, and save money. Win, 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 right? No. 
again, still talking to you like you're a moron. Like, why would you even consider thinking about the issue beyond this? It sounds good up front. You're going to look a horse in the teeth? Come on. Okay. Now, I'll, climate change is too big. I'll have to address that in an episode of my main podcast. Uh, but right now, I'll just deal with grow the renewable energy economy. As if the economy is some intrinsic thing. The economy doesn't exist as a way of serving people what they need. It doesn't exist to produce the things that people need. It's a thing we should work toward benefiting. It's an intrinsic end in itself. Again, this is the same as the create jobs thing. Reversing cause and effect. You don't want jobs, you want the stuff jobs create. You don't want to grow the economy for its own sake. That's not a goal. The economy grows as a byproduct of people creating things they want. You should never be thinking, well, I should do this to grow the economy. Anyway, win, 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 right? He says, smarmily. I'm not sure if smarmily is a word. You know what I mean. <laughs> well, not if you're in the fossil fuel industry. <gasps> or one of the politicians who owe them favors. And that's where things get messy. Yeah, yeah. In state houses all over the country, there's a growing movement by industry front groups <laughs> to undermine net metering and other renewable energy incentives. Front groups. As if... I mean, you see this kind of Marxist language everywhere. Anybody who advises you to follow the money, as if that's some wise, infallible method for discovering people's true motives, is a moron. You know, people have values beyond money. Would you kill your significant other for a million dollars if you could get away with it? No? Then you're not motivated purely by money outside of all context. I mean, the reason I bring up Marx is because the idea there is that people's ideas are determined by their, by the class structure, by their place within the class conflict, by their tools of production. So, putting it in simple terms, you're motivated by material self-interest. Marx was avowedly, although not actually, a materialist. So this whole idea of... <laughs> These front groups with people like the Koch brothers donating. And they couldn't have any other motive, but they're gonna they're gonna make a profit off of this somehow, a financial profit. That whole mindset is Marxist. It's anti-intellectual. It just throws out ideas, ideas don't matter, spiritual values don't matter, all of that is uh, rationalizing superstructure, to put it in Marxist terms. So this front group thing, as if anybody who's against <laughs> this green communism could not possibly be motivated by values or any view of the good. I mean, their view is they're socialists. They want free stuff. So their view is any rich person who's arguing with them, they just want material stuff. They just want money. It's just battle over money. It's a depressing and false worldview. <laughs> oh, yes, and they mentioned the Koch brothers, of course. The evil Koch brothers. These front groups were funded by the Koch brothers. Well, you know what else the Koch brothers fund? The Smithsonian Natural Museum of History. Or Museum of Natural History. <laughs> Natural Museum. Um... Uh, the United Negro College Fund, many, many other things. Uh, 
But of course, they're just doing this to make some crass financial profit. These groups scored recent victories against net metering in Indiana and Maine and have turned the renewable energy mandate for utilities in wind-rich Kansas, known in the industry as a renewable portfolio standard, into a toothless voluntary goal. Oh, voluntary? Well, we all know that's bad. You have to force people to do things. Voluntary's no good. This is actually a point you should take to heart. People only want power. What's the point of power? What's the point of being able to force you to do something? Why would you need power to force somebody to do something? Well, you only need it when the thing you're trying to force them to do doesn't make sense. You don't need political power to enforce good ideas. You can persuade people of those. You need it to force people to do things that don't make sense. So whenever anybody's trying to force you to do something, it is almost certainly because it's a bad idea. Otherwise, he just tell you why you should do it. Industry groups and the politicians they effectively buy claim that distributed solar energy imposes costs on customers who don't install solar panels because solar users don't pay their fair share of the costs of maintaining the grid. That's true. It's just socialism. Taking from the people who pay, giving to the people who don't. In this case, sun-worshipping savages. Most cynically, they feign concern for poor people. <laughs> Typical of this is Maine Governor Paul LePage's claim in his letter vetoing a bill that would have preserved net meter metering in his state that the practice subsidizes the cost of solar panels at the expense of the elderly and poor who can least afford it. That's exactly what it does. So I don't know how you can infer from that that he doesn't actually care about the poor. I don't care about the poor, but I'm sure he does. Strong movements are pushing good energy policy in states all over, such as Hawaii's mandate for 100% of its electricity to come from renewables by 2045, and Oregon's requirement that 10% of shared solar capacity be set aside for low-income people. That doesn't seem to have anything to do with environmentalism, but okay. <clears throat> the last part, I mean. As for Hawaii's 100% mandate, I mean, they're talking about outlawing fossil fuels. Uh, people will die if they put that into practice. Many people will die. Uh, they're not going to put it into practice. I mean, who knows? We may be in a civil war by that point. So this idea that you have to force people to use the best energy possible. You don't. When it becomes cheap, people will buy it. You hear this conflicting argument all the time. On the one hand, we need government power to force people to buy this stuff. On the other hand, it's already working. It already makes sense. Why are you trying to hold it back? Well, if it's already working and it already makes sense, people would be buying it. Who's going to buy... Is anybody loyal to fossil fuels in the sense that they would buy fossil fuels even if they were more expensive out of spite? No. And renewables. Oh, Lord. Just look at Alex Epstein's work if you want commentary on... Well, all the kinds of things mentioned in this article, but renewables. He says they should be called unreliables, and... That's true. I mean, first of all, what's renewable? Everything's renewable. Fossil fuels are renewable if you wait millions of years. What these sources of energy actually are is unreliable. Wind and solar are intermittent. 
can't store them, at least not uh, to the degree that would be required to replace fossil fuels at our current uh, energy consumption, and we don't want our current energy consumption. We want as much more energy consumption as possible so we can do more things. Anyway, that was this article by Basa Vassen at the Climate Justice Project. Justice is not in quotation marks, although it should be. Um, so I thought I'd just try a video for once, and if I get a good reaction to this, or a bad reaction to this, or no reaction to this, uh, you can expect more in the future. So I hope you like this, and check out my podcast, Functional Philosophy. You can find it on this channel. And go to my website, Charles2, that's T-E-W, I'm sure you can read that on YouTube, which you're on right now. Um, there you can find information on and links to all my work. This is just a fun side thing. I figured I'd do this because it uh, struck me and I don't hear anybody doing this kind of commentary. So, thanks for watching.